Unfortunately, many hypnotherapists still break their head on the wall because they don't get results with their clients or not as much as they were expecting. More than one hypnotherapist that gets trained every year uh, is starting to doubt himself after just one failure or maybe not a failure but some, something where they noticed that they were not really that efficient or they don't think they have been efficient with the clients who paid them. And I know quite well that feeling of thinking to yourself at the end of a session, oh shit, did, did what I say really helped or was it completely worthless? Because when the client sometimes gets out of the, the office, you may not be quite sure if they are going to change or not. If you have done your job well, they will, but there may be this insecurity about yeah, did it work did I say did I go too far sometimes when, when we are confrontational we may not be sure if it was too much or not and we will only know it the next session or maybe never if they never come back so it is a lot of things to deal with what I noticed though after 10 years of experience is that if you have structured your session well enough with the method for example I'm going to give in this video in a clear structure you will always provide change a shift in their mind and specifically you will provide a shift because you did not provide a shift. Let me explain. It is never basically your client's fault if something didn't work correctly during the session. If something doesn't work it is only because in the very beginning you sense you are not going to be competent or like you don't want to work with this person, in which case you say it beforehand. If you did not say it beforehand, then you are obligated to provide as many tools and resources as you can, and those tools and resources will have an effect if you use them correctly. For hypnotherapists who can't make their client change, it is simply because they try to make the client fit into a belief system that they don't fit into. Now, the belief system of your client, if it is stuck on something extremely unproductive for their well-being, the belief system of your client will, can and will update, but it will update 10 times faster if you make them arrive at their own conclusion for why what they believe into, what they used to believe into so far was complete nonsense. But they need to realize that by themselves. If you try to force that into their head, they will resist. So how can we make the person reflect upon themselves so that they get at their own to their own realization without forcing. I will use many questions from the NLP meta model but uh, changed uh, to some extent with uh, some maneuvers I found over the years. So we start by the basic question, what stopped you so far from achieving this or that? You came for a reason, you have anxiety issues, you have a lack of self-confidence, whatever it is, uh, you don't find the right purpose in your job, whatever, Okay, what stopped you so far, what has been stopping you so far from accomplishing, from finding a solution to this? In probably 110% of cases, their answer will fall into one of those categories. Either they will tell you something about themselves, uh, I have a low self-esteem, I don't believe in myself, I'm a piece of shit, uh, I am worthless, all of those, you know, self-negative judgment, okay, it is about themselves, or it will be about others, people don't believe in me, people are stubborn around me, uh, no, one, no one can help me, uh, it's about others around, or it is just confusion, I don't know, I have no clue about that. So how can we go from here and make their mind drift toward the right conclusion? So right here you have the main questions, the main directions I would use personally in each of those situations. And then we will just go down step by step until I give you in a blue color, not yet, the main questions you can use following the right trail so that somebody reevaluates their own mindset, reevaluates their own belief system without you forcing it. So on the first one, if they say anything about myself, I am too bad, I am too slow, I am not enough of that, I am too much of this, I am too fat, I am not beautiful enough, whatever. Okay, how do you know that? You always start with how do you know it is the truth? Who made that rule? What do you know about this? Again, I will structure that into three main replies answer I get usually in my practice to each of those uh, questions. When I ask how do you know that, 
It is, in many cases, an internal dialogue going on. So I tell myself, I tell myself, or whenever I think about this. But when they say, think about this, I can see their eyes going sideways. So it is like internal dialogue. Or whenever they use words that have tried to, um, it doesn't sound clear in my head. They have a massive sigh and like they, Ah, and they make a sound. So whenever there are sounds around, we know it is about auditory language, which is what keeps most people stuck. It is the story, the narrative they tell to themselves. With the narrative, we want to clarify when did this start. We want to figure out the main shocking point at which the narrative started. Obviously, there was an emotional wound or something extremely painful that happened that made the person create that narrative. And as long as we don't evaluate clearly what happened there, any other discussion may be worthless because we didn't uh, take into consideration why this narrative uh, got into place. The next common uh, reply to how do you know that is a specific souvenir or specific memory of their life. Uh, when, like, no, at no point in my life was I successful into anything, uh, I know I am bad because the last time I tried something it failed. For example, a relationship, oh, I cannot find a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend because last time it happened extremely bad. So basically they just mention right off the bat, not something like they tell to themselves, but a specific memory, a specific souvenir, they just throw at you right off the bat when you ask them, when you confront them with how do you know you're stuck. In that case, we want to immediately help them detach the emotional pressure linked with that old memory. So we ask, how can it still affect you today? Because we, we play with time frames basically here. If it is something that belongs to the past, how it is how is it possible that this thing that is only like in your head at this point, because it is over, it is the past, how it is possible that you're still affected by it today? And sometimes that question alone will be enough to make them get a breakthrough. Not every time, it depends on the, the person, but it did happen to me that this question alone was enough to make them reevaluate and, well, it's only me who get myself trapped. Yes, you do. So from there, we can elaborate and go into a deeper change process, a more meaningful change process, so that they change by themselves. And the last one, I love that one, when they tell me, oh, because I read about that on the website. Uh, I am ADHD because I saw on TikTok all the, the, those people telling that people like me had ADHD. And that's not even a joke. I really had that in therapy session uh, with some people. And in that case, I'm like, yeah, okay, maybe the person you listened to was knowledgeable about the topic, but did that person talk to you directly? Because through a TikTok algorithm, you just have people who talk about all sorts of things, who are giving their message to dozens of thousands of potential people they talk to. How do you know it is really about you? So some people will think that because they read about their symptoms on a, in a book, in a, they heard about it in a documentary, then it uh, automatically applies to them, which may not be the case at all. Maybe they just self-diagnose themselves with some trauma stuff that they may not even have in the end. So in that case, I like to challenge with how do you attach importance to this? Like, at some point, at which point did you make that statement, that idea, that concept so important? Because it gives you meaning, but meaning about what? Like meaning about yourself, but why do you need that to get meaning about yourself? So some people like to identify themselves only with negative threats. Oh, I am this and this and that, so I am ADHD or I am a, a dysmorphic personality, whatever they say. They like to just find out how fucked up they can be. And some people are giving this dopamine strike of studying how fucked up they are. And that's just leading them into a wall because the more they dig into how fucked up they are, the more the more things, the more reasons they find for why they should stay feeling insecure and should only feeling bad. I like to propose the other approach. How can you feel better right now? But for that, we need, we need to detach first the emotional link with the importance of that guy who may not even be knowledgeable about the topic and make you find your own truth without listening to somebody else. Or you can listen if it is somebody who makes you feel better, but when it is something that is just giving, getting you deeper into the rabbit hole of feeling negative, 
Maybe you just need to stop listening or hearing uh, from those people. Next on our uh, journey, we have when the client, once you have been asking them what stopped you so far, they give you a reason that has threat to others. Oh, people never let me express myself. Oh, my parents. Oh, my uh, siblings. Oh, the teachers at school. Oh, my uh, last boss in the job. Oh, my uh, ex relative my ex-girlfriend, my ex-boyfriend. They will always have somebody else to blame. Those those people are like the perfect blamers, they like to blame somebody else for what's happening in their life right now. In that case, I first need to figure out, okay, what did those people do specifically? Because in some cases, there will be a massive trauma linked with the relationship, in which case we need to address that, and sometimes it will just be bullshit. But I want to ask, what specifically did those people do to you? What happened? One likely answer that can be phrased in different ways, but one likely answer is people made fun of me. So that will have to add mostly to people who have, a, so when your client has a problem with um, his early childhood, uh, that may be the, the cause, maybe your client never developed a good self-esteem because in the past people made fun of him or people rejected him or people um, just didn't want to consider him as a grown adult even when he was becoming a grown adult. All of those things can play on the psyche of the, of the client. So in that case, we will use the same question as the one on, uh, on the, uh, the age topic. How can it still affect you today? Something that belongs to the past is only belonging into your memory at this point. Unless there is still a person in your direct entourage who is blaming you, okay, that's a different story. But if no one in your direct entourage is blaming you and it's only the memory you have of that event, how can this event still affect you today? We want to help the client get at the realization that the only thing that gets themselves trapped is themselves, is the, all the emotional pressure they put on themselves with the memory of that. And through hypnosis, of course, we can detach that and help them to heal by dropping and leaving the back of rocks behind, for example, one metaphor I use quite often, just help them realize that it is within their control, even if their unconscious mind has found useful for whatever reason to attach an emotional link with that event from their past, that link can as well be detached and can be attached to somewhere else where they won't need to be affected as much anymore by the emotional components of that uh, negative experience. Sometimes, less common, I will get people who say uh, it's a comparison problem. They may not be aware it is a comparison problem, but I hear about uh, it's because this person, I could never get as good as this person. Very common among siblings when you, you have like one older sibling that was way more successful, way more talented into art, into school, into whatever. Maybe the, the little brother or the little sister or whatever feels extremely insecure because he or she was always down compared to the, the, higher, the higher level sibling. Um, that's quite common and that may happen in many families or it may just happen in other contexts at work, for example, in school. In which case I like to challenge with what makes you want to compare yourself. In the end, no one is forcing you to compare yourself. Of course, it is an evolutionary mechanism and we are all assessing our value based on the group we are part of. It is an uh, automatic mechanism, but just because it is built in, in our brain, just like stress and anxiety, does not mean we can't act upon it either. So when you have the drive to compare yourself, just elaborate what makes you want to still compare yourself. What are you going to lose if you stop comparing yourself? In the end, you can just stop and you can replace those comparison um, behaviors with healthier maneuvers, mental maneuvers, like uh, grat gratitude, feeling proud maybe of the achievements you've had so far and not necessarily assessing your value based on who are you compared to somebody else. And the last answer I used to get is a kind of negative suggestion. When somebody specifically, a parent, a teacher, whoever it was in the past, when somebody specifically told them something, or one time I had a girl who was not confident in herself at all, and when I asked about this, she said her last boyfriend had been extremely mean 
with her when he said why he wanted to leave her and those suggestions stayed stuck in her head and she could not let go of it and get past all of those. And when I investigated her past childhood, there was not really any big trauma or anything, at least nothing worth mentioning um, related to this situation specifically. So it was mostly those bad suggestions. And in that case, I like to challenge with what if they were wrong? What if that person who told you X or Y or this mean thing, what if that person was just wrong from the beginning? What, is that, what if that person had no understanding of what they're talking about? What would you have been choosing so far if that person had been wrong from the get-go? What is the natural path in life and the natural evolution you would have had so far if that person had been wrong from the beginning? And finally, we get into the category of people who just don't have a clue, they don't know where they are going, they don't know what's happening to them, and they don't really know how to explain uh, what is going wrong, what is wrong with them. So in those cases, what I have many different ways of uh, replying to this, but if they are like confused and lost and stuck and they don't know what to reply, I just ask them, what if there was a simpler answer to your problem? If I say something or if I ask something and they really don't know what to uh, reply, I just switch a bit the topic of conversation indirectly and I say, what if there was a simpler answer to your problem? Or just if there was a simpler answer that could solve everything about your issues, what would it look like? So in this scenario, what you want with somebody who is completely uh, lost and really doesn't know how to uh, move on, doesn't know how to clarify what's happening to them and what do they need, you want to sometimes offer them a menu of options, a menu of words they could use to fortify the idea they have of where their life is. So whenever they start to enumerate on, I would trust, I would just uh, do this, I would just do a job that I love. And many of those people don't have a clear idea. They know what they want, don't want anymore, but they don't really know what they want clearly. Or like they don't know as clearly what they want as they know clearly what they don't want anymore. So they would say, I would just, you know, feel um, well in my job. I would just have a, a nice relationship. And in that case, I want to clarify what will this look like specifically? What will this look like then? How? Um, what will you see around you? We want to add sensory details to make a compelling vision into their mind so that they will be compelled to move on and to go toward that outcome. A second case might be when they uh, talk about something but they are unsure of being able to do it or they are unsure if it is the right thing for them. Maybe just because some part of them is still holding them back, maybe because they don't think like that they deserve it, uh, maybe because they don't think they are competent enough to do that, so they will just infuse their answer with maybe potentially eventually I could somehow someday if uh, this was able to capable to they are completely unsure in that case you want to make their mind drift past this event they are slightly maybe eventually considering so that they have a clear idea of is it the right choice for them or not so the language pattern here is if you had already done it so it is done it is in the past by now what has changed then? We want to play with time distortion here. Somebody who is unsure of choosing this path or that path, and maybe this is better, but maybe they shouldn't take that decision. Okay, what if you had done it anyway? Many people are so unsure and they keep themselves stuck for like 10 years of their life because they can't make a strong decision once and for all. And they keep reevaluating, questioning their own thoughts, their own motivations. What if this turns bad? What if I choose this and it doesn't work go right? Well, let's elaborate, okay. What if this doesn't go well? Tell me, what will happen? If this thing you are considering doesn't happen as you expected, what specifically is the worst case uh, scenario that you may face? And on the opposite, something that you want to uh, get into, a life path maybe the client wants to get into and they are unsure, like maybe yes, maybe no, if you had already done it, what would have changed in your life because you have already done that? With that 
clear idea in mind, you can evaluate is it the right choice for them or not. And the last one that I don't really like is if they just stay evasive with extremely generic general words, uh, positive mindset words like I, I will just be fine. Uh, when you ask them like what do you want, how will you know you have achieved your outcomes and they say oh I, I will be fine, uh, I, I will feel okay, I will have an okay life. First of all, it is not compelling enough at all to make somebody move forward in their life, just feel okay, just uh, have an okay life. People who um, just want an okay life or a, a sabbatical or just a normal life, they are people who have been either traumatized by an extreme level of stress in their life or people who just got insecure at some point because again somebody told them they could not achieve this or like they compared themselves to uh, somebody else something happened and they don't think of themselves as competent enough to go climb the ladder to reach the real thing they want. So in those cases, I get back to the beginning somehow by really crystal clear asking them uh, how specifically will you know that you're there? I will just be okay with my life. How will you know that? It is when I will have my kids around and this. Well, you already have your kids around and you're already in your house, so doesn't make any sense. People who just don't have a clear idea of where they want to go, it is in most cases because something traumatic happened and now they, de they undervalued their own potential to stay stuck into just enough, just a normal thing. What if they had a higher level of potential? What if they could go way beyond what they think is um, normal, what they think is acceptable? You can help their mind go beyond that. If you want to keep developing your language skills and abilities to make people reflect on themselves even without them knowing, you can use the seven steps to master sleight of mouth down below in the description where you will learn many ways you can tweak the conversation so that people reflect upon their life in ways they have never anticipated so far. <laughs>